How much time do you think you spend? Thinking about money? Thinking about money versus thinking about your art. Oh my God. <laughs> For me, there's always that stress of like, can I do this again? So it makes yes. it hard to celebrate when you accomplish something. Yes, which is why I have the six months. Yeah, because it's like, like, that was cute for 2021, but what you going to do in 2025? Yeah, you don't know. Exactly. You have no idea. I'm just trying to be somebody. Just make a way, make a way, make a way. I'm just trying to be somebody. Hey everyone, it's me, Halise, endeavoring to persevere. As always, back with another trying to be somebody video podcast episode for you. Today we have Evelyn from the internet. She is a dear friend of mine and a constant and consistent collaborator as well. I of course wanted to have her on the podcast because she just thinks about art and creativity in a way that I wouldn't say is completely different from me but definitely adjacent to me. And it's been really fun to have someone to bounce ideas off of, to collaborate with consistently, and frankly, to grow with over the tenure of time that I've been on the internet doing things. I wanted to have Evelyn on the podcast, though, specifically to talk about exit strategies. I find that full-time creative artists don't just become that willy-nilly. There usually is a whole back set of decisions that are made offline, honestly, that we as the consumers of their art or the patrons of their art never actually see. And Evelyn's exit strategy from her W2 full-time job a few years back was a very purposeful, Thing. And so I really wanted to have her on to talk about that process and how she got herself there. So that way, if you're someone who's thinking, you know, eventually I do want to leave wherever you're currently at, the goal is to leave. For some people, the goal is not to leave, by the way. For some people, the goal is to always have a full-time job doing something else. So for those of y'all who are thinking about it, I hope this podcast episode will be enlightening for you. Of course, we go off topic and talk about all sorts of other things as well that I think are beneficial, but yes, we're having Evelyn on to talk about exit strategies. Let's get into it. Evelyn from the internet is hey, here. Hello. And she's here because easy access. Yeah. She lives in Austin. Call me, beat me. I want to reach me. I'm in San Antonio. Easy drive. And we're also friends IRL. Yes. So. Yeah. And creative collaborators. Absolutely. It's another thing worth saying. <laughs> Apparently. And we're both children of God. And we're both children. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. I shall not. Hide on away. Yes. You know what I've never seen? The Righteous Forsaken. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave this part in. I was not rolling sound on a take. Yeah. And by the grace of God, I saw that there and stopped it before it got too far. And that was Evelyn coaching me through <laughs> saying that part of by the grace of God, I saw it. Yeah. Um, because I'm pissed at myself. So yeah. we are children of God here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great. <laughs> We're making a way out of no way. Yeah. Every day, all day. Mm -hmm. um, but we're here in Evelyn's office, her home studio mm -hmm. office. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening to us, check us out on YouTube so that way you can see Evelyn's home studio office space. It's quite nifty. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a sign in Evelyn's office space that mm -hmm. I love and I think will actually be a great way to tie into this podcast's theme because i'm trying to give every episode a theme yeah. of it so go ahead and tell us what it is so um i have a sign um in my office that says i am living the dream allegedly <laughs> a little asterisk allegedly. allegedly allegedly that's what i'm told <laughs> i'm told i'm living the dream yeah and i believe we are <laughs> we are attitude of gratitude attitude of gratitude yeah. But I will say that, and this is not me uh, being like, oh, what was me? Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people, when they're thinking about becoming a full-time artist, Evelyn is a full-time artist, mm -hmm. by the way. She makes an entire her entire living off of her creativity. Yes. 
as do I, Mm -hmm. likewise. But it was not a smooth transition to get to there. And so I wanted to have Evelyn on to kind of tell y'all the bear buckle, the bear, bear, what do they call it? Bear, bad news bears. What? (laughs) Bear, bear knuckle, the bear necessities of becoming a (laughs) full-time freelancer and the things you got to do. Yeah. By showing you Evelyn's journey. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So go ahead and hit us with how you went from W2. Too many. Yeah. How you went from (laughs) W2 land to W9 land. All them 1099s. All them 1099s. Come through 1099s. Yeah. So I think that's the first part that we're kind of referencing is that I went from having one boss to having many, which is kind of the flip of what people assume freelancing is. Yeah. Freelancing, people think, means you're free. And yeah. in some respects, you are. In some respects, you are. Um, but in terms of how many people you're juggling, it's it's <laughs> it's kind of garbage. But <laughs> but <laughs> so this is how I made the transition. I uh, worked a full time job in like an agency type of marketing advertising space, doing generally the same thing I'm doing here, making videos, um, social media, working with advertisers, but I was just doing it for a company. And we had clients, we had a sales team, I was on part of the creative team, and that whole, you know, song and dance of pitching, then you gotta make it, approvals. So all the same things I'm kind of doing now, just under the, you know, corporate structure. Yeah. And so in 2017, I was like, I'm done. I can't do both. I can't do that. And also my YouTube channel and my other, you know, internet endeavors. Yeah. Because it was kind of this, it was flexing the same creative muscle. And so I was so drained, um, having to be creative at work and creative after work working a nine to five and then like a six to 2 a.m. Yeah. And just like having to do it all the time. And so in 2017, my goal was to quit my job by the end of the year. And and I did it by December. Um, I put my two weeks notice in. And the way I w- really was able to do that was I figured out how much money I needed to live. And I saved that money while also planning out how to cut my expenses. Yeah. So I had to move out of my apartment um, and move in with some friends. I could have moved home, but... (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Um, I wanted to stay in Austin. So I was like, let me see if I can move in with my friends. They graciously allowed me into their humble abode um, for a year. So they gave me a year to save money. I only had to pay them like rent. I didn't have to pay any bills, anything else, which was very gracious of them. And I had to just cut back on my expenses and save money so that I could focus on getting my bearings with my different social media, YouTube contract things. So by December 2017, I had quit. And I will say, so something that was really cool about watching you go through the process, and I think this is something that a lot of creatives consider doing, is Mm -hmm. having an accountability team or Mm -hmm. accountability group that you're in. So Evelyn was actually, and still, well, when we ever decide to like have them again, <laughs> right, right. we've been too busy like collaborating to actually do them anymore. Yeah. But for the longest time, we were in an accountability group together with two other women, mm-hmm. and Evelyn basically would talk to us at the beginning of that year of 2017. She was like, "My goal is to leave my job mm-hmm. by the end of the year," mm-hmm. and we were like, "Cool." And then every month after that, we would meet. And be like, how, what are you doing Mm -hmm. to push yourself towards that goal? Yeah. Um, And so it was really cool to see Evelyn make that process Mm -hmm. or see you make that process over time. So that's something I would definitely recommend to people is accountability. Accountability. Try to see if you can find other artists that are near you, creatives that are near you um, Mm -hmm. to collaborate with. Or, you know, over the internet. That's the beauty of what Rona taught us Mm -hmm. is many things can be done over the internet. Zoom is a thing. Google Meets are a thing, (laughs) so on and so forth. But can you break down now, like, financially what Mm -hmm. that meant for you to leave? Like, what did you end up saving throughout the year? Like, how did you kind of build Mm -hmm. all that for yourself? Um, So I saved, this is kind of a big number, so I'm going to explain. Yeah. And I have a video about it, which I can give you to, like, Yes, I'll put it in the show notes and in the atmosphere. Um, I call it the Eye of Sauron. Yes. Uh, (laughs) So I had saved $20,000. 
over the course of many, many years. I have always had a job and my YouTube running on the side. Mm -hmm. And luckily my, um, my full-time job was always able to pay all my bills. So I was never using YouTube to help me live. It was always stuff on the side. Um, and so I had been saving it. I started monetizing my channel like really, really, really in like 2015. Yeah. Or like 20, 2013 to 2015. Um, and so I had a couple of years to save all the money that I would make from YouTube, any money I would make from doing um, speaking gigs, any money I was making from showing my videos at like festivals locally here in town. I would blog on the side, be like a copywriter, um, video editor. I would, it, it wasn't always just from my YouTube channel, um, but any money I made on the side in addition to my job was being saved. So that by the time it was the end of 2017, I had $20,000 saved. And in it, so I had the $20,000 saved in addition to cutting my rent almost in half. I cut my bills in half Ooh. by moving out of my apartment. And so that allowed me to like be kind of safe for a year. I said $20,000 in a year, not living on my own. I can do that for a year. If I need a whole year, you know, to figure things out yeah that'll last me yeah that's the interesting thing too about it is that most people don't realize there has to be some level of calculated risk mm -hmm. that you ultimately I think have to take if you want to try to be a full-time yeah freelance artist if you will mm -hmm. um and, and I would like to say that people have quit their jobs with much less <laughs> Much less. Yeah. Do I recommend it? No. <laughs> I don't, yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't want to give the impression that, like, you need to save, like, buku cash to try. Yeah. I, I, it's hard for me to, like, I have heavy paws mm -hmm. when people are like, oh, I just quit my I I never have given that advice to anybody. Right. I mean, di different strokes for different folks. I'm yeah. not a figure outer. As you That's go. That's why I saved my money. Yeah. Some people do have that. Je ne sais quoi. quoi to like figure it out. I very much don't. Yeah. A few quick announcements. If you're watching us here on YouTube, please comment down below, engage in this video, and also give us a thumbs up. That really helps algorithmically for us to stay discovered, get discovered, all of that kind of fun stuff. The second thing you can do if you're listening to us wherever you get your podcasts, please rate us there. Ideally, it would be on Apple Podcasts because that does help us with discoverability. But wherever you're listening to us, rate us there. Really, really helpful. Thank you so much. And then if you want to take it a step further, hit up the Patreon, patreon.com slash Halise. There you get early access to these podcast episodes, as well as private behind the scenes content from me that is exclusive to the Patreon. It's a really good time. For example, Evelyn and I have actually been doing a live stream through the Patreon where we review shows. We're currently reviewing Master of None, Moments in Love, season three. So yeah, hit up Patreon, patreon.com slash Halise for exclusive content. It's a good time. And that's it, you know, let's get back to this episode. My story to quitting my agency job, similar to you and leaving, is very similar. But essentially what had happened was a year after Evelyn, and no, six months after Evelyn, in 2018, I had already been thinking about leaving. Yeah. I had already been thinking about leaving my agency job for years at that point. Um, but what ended up happening was... You know, one, I have a life partner that I have had since I was 21. So there was another level of it for me in that I had to now convince someone mm -hmm. else, in so few words, to take, to let me, well, not let me, but like to be cool with me yeah. engaging in this calculated risk. Big mm -hmm. on calculated, less on risk. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of conversations. I think that's a whole nother level to trying to do a freelance thing for yourself mm -hmm. is that if you're married or if you have kids Whew. and you're trying to do this, recognize that your transition into it, be okay with this too, is like you just need to give yourself a lot of grace with it. Yeah. Because the beauty of, and this is why a lot of artists, creatives, I think, aren't usually in committed relationships and aren't usually... Um, 
try, you know, maybe don't have kids and like other, you know, very serious mm-hmm. <laughs> commitments um, because you kind of need to have a level of selfishness to get it going. And I don't yeah. mean selfishness in terms of like a negative. It's just you really need to focus on Think yourself. Um, to make it happen and you need the ability to uh, pivot very quickly and be incredibly flexible all the time and so um, for those of y'all who are artists who have kids or are married in Mm long-term relationships with partners it's okay if it's taking you a minute it's okay to take a minute it's okay because you got to think about a lot of stuff and even like it's not freelancing but even in my own childhood my parents made decisions. I can tell now looking back mm. that they were waiting for me to finish elementary school. Yeah. And they were like, okay, we like moved in between or, you know, quitting a job when I graduated high school. And I was yes. like, dang, how long were they waiting to quit that yeah. job? Because I could tell that they were waiting for the right time for the kids. Exactly. So, yeah. No shame. Ain't no shame. Ain't no shame in it, man. Um, but yeah, for me, the way I was able to leave was I had been thinking about it for years. I had been having a lot of conversations with my long-term partner for years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the beauty of having a partner is that you do have someone, hopefully, ideally, can be sort of that financial stability. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, again, you need to take into consideration that the decisions you make are not just decisions about your life. Like, they don't just affect you. Yeah. They affect again, your kids mm-hmm. or your partner. So you kind of need everybody to be with you yep. um, and be willing to give you a chance to fail and be okay with it. Yeah. So I know for me, Chris, Chris and I talked a lot about it, and I think w- I went into leaving my job. He and I officially were like, he was like, I'm cool with you trying this for six months. I believe that is what happened because I had figured out financially what I needed to commit to the relationship, which right. was another hard conversation to have. Like the dollar amount. What is my dollar amount commitment Contribution, yeah. into making sure the rent is working, lights are on, mm-hmm. food is on the table. Yeah. And we figured that out. And I had gotten two opportunities. I got Creators for Change with YouTube, mm-hmm. which is basically a filmmaking grant for the channel around hate speech and xenophobia. Mm-hmm. And then I applied for the Adobe residency in 2018. I am a repeat applier, by the way. This is the second time I applied and I got it. Um, but I applied and didn't get it. Yeah. But they were like, you're cool. Here's a grant. And I was like, oh, work. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, And so with those two opportunities, I knew that I could make it till the end of 2018. So I left in June and made it to the end. And I I had a landing strip. Mm -hmm. Unlike you, though, I didn't have like, did we have emergency savings? I don't think we did. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) Not everybody got to have everything. (laughs) I would recommend that, though. (laughs) I don't think we had emergency savings, but I would highly recommend it. Mm. Do you, something that, like, I remember when I was telling my parents, so that, like, mm-hmm. I'm finna to leave my agency job mm-hmm. to do freelancey things full time. They were both like, why? Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When they were, they were both like, why? And they were both like, but why can't you just do the artsy fartsy stuff on the side? Yeah. My hobby. My hobby. Yeah. Did you go through that feeling too? Like, and and um, then I thought to myself, like, why can't I do it on this? Side? I still don't know the answer to that question. Do amen. you know? <laughs> I don't know. I'd be in my office, like, with my parents. It was they were just trying to make sure I was okay. They were, it was a lot of confusion. Yeah, they never outright asked me like, why am I doing this? I remember it was like around Thanksgiving or Christmas, and my dad just asked me. He was like, "Are you good?" <laughs> And in that one question with yeah. so many other questions. And I was like, Dad, I am. Yeah. And that's what he, I think that's what he just needed is yeah. to be like, do you got it? <laughs> I don't know how you got it, but do you got it? Yeah. And for me to be like, yeah, I got it. He was like, okay, won't ask no more questions. Yeah. So that was it. My, I think my parents now, mm-hmm. two and a half years in. <laughs> Right? No, it's 2021. So, three years in. (laughs) I don't, time is a construct. But um, three years in, I feel like now they're like, 
Oh, mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah. And, and I can understand how, like, I don't know, for me, myself, me, I really want my parents to like be proud of me you know what i'm saying no i feel that (laughs) i feel that (laughs) yeah i mean i (laughs) am parents man gotta love them gotta love them gotta love them i think you're right though most parents are just like i just want to know like yeah they're not going to be down for you taking calculated risks because they're They're your parents yeah (laughs) just like genetically not taking risks yeah and so like oh well when i think about it they were very much like you're moving in with who (laughs) especially because my friends are married to each other yeah they were like you're gonna be in the what room like (laughs) you're interrupting these two married people's lives and i'm like worry about yourself (laughs) um they said i could first of all um so they were very much like and, you know, our parents are old school. Yes. So even just different living situations, yes, they're very, like, confused by it. Whereas my friends are like, yeah, that's why we have an extra room in this house. So that people could stay here if they needed to. Yeah. And so they weren't weirded out by it. But my parents are very much like, huh? You can't just, like... Live in a smaller apartment? I was like, that's not how apartments work. That's not how apartments work anymore. (laughs) That's not how the rent be working. It's really not. (laughs) Yeah. So fast forward. Mm -hmm. You took your year. I did. And you figured some things out for yourself. Allegedly. Allegedly. I was going to (laughs) add. Allegedly. (laughs) Now you're at a point. Would you say you're at a point, and this is what, two years in? Three. three. Three Three-ish? Yeah. Three-ish years in, do you feel like you're at a point where you're sustainable? You know what I mean? You no, know, I get what you're saying. I, hmm, sustainable. I feel like I am not in danger. <laughs> <laughs> but I have this feeling, and I think this is a, a very common feeling amongst like freelancers and contractors. It's this feeling of like, I don't know how I got here, but we're okay. Like we did it. Very accurate. Can I repeat it? Who's to say? And that's part of the, the nervousness around quitting the full-time job. You know that you're going to get that paycheck. I mean, there's always getting fired, getting furloughed. A full-time job is also not always guaranteed. It is not, yeah. But, for example, like looking back over my, when I'm doing my taxes, I'm like, that was a great year. Yeah. Can we do it again? No idea. Yeah. Like no reasonable idea. Yeah. If I can do that again. Um, so I feel like I'm okay. Is it sustainable or do I feel this yeah this is yeah 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 i can't say that i do but i have like i have monies yeah i have monies i think um something that i wasn't prepared for going becoming a full-time freelancey artist person Mm -hmm. um obviously i'm doing the residency this year so that comes with a level of financial stability which is amazing Mm -hmm. shout out to adobe hey hey Hey. (laughs) (laughs) um but for me it's I didn't realize how stressed I would always be. Like, there's always just a, a yep. level. There's a certain baseline. Low grade stress. Low grade stress that you will always oh, have wow. as you're freelancing. Mm-hmm. Um, and even people that I think that I consider where they're at in their career to be great. Mm-hmm. Um, I can still like you. There's like a code of like words <laughs> right. that artists use. It's like where, an eye twitch. Yeah. <laughs> where there's still like. That low grade stress is still there. Yeah. And I something I've thought about too is do you have like a savings number where if mm-hmm. you would if you saw that in your bank account, your stress would I don't know about go away, yeah. amen, but like yeah. be significantly reduced. Like do you have that? Oh, you take it out. I can actually phone. look it up. I can actually look it up. Okay, so I have so there's my personal account and mm-hmm. then there's my business account. Yeah. So um, I have an emergency fund for my personal account, which is three months worth of pay, which for me is nine thousand dollars. So you pay yourself three thousand dollars a month. Yeah. 
Um, so that's the goal. I don't currently have that emergency fund. Mm. I'm still building up to the 9,000. Got you. But that's the goal to have three months, of $3,000 each. Yeah. Um, and then for my business account. For your business. Because you got to be about your business. Why can't I read this? <laughs> Okay, I have an operations emergency fund. Yeah. And a payroll emergency fund. Amen. Um, so an operations emergency fund, I have six months. The goal. Yeah. Okay, this is all a goal. Yeah. The goal is to have six months of my operational funds. And can't like operational funds, how you would you define them? I know um, how I do. but like, It's yeah. all the software, all the expenses that I have that are predictable, software equipment, um, yeah. Wi-Fi, I don't know. Yeah. All that stuff. Um, and then payroll emergency savings, I have, the goal is to have three months of that. Nice. So, don't have that, but that's the goal. I have about $4,000 saved for my business savings. Nice. So, in case anything goes wrong, it comes from that. Yeah. Yeah. See, and so, yeah, so for me with my company, so we both have single member LLCs, yes. which is, I, I'm not going to give you legal advice, but. Because I don't got it. Because I don't <laughs> got it. That? Yeah, because I don't <laughs> got it. But consider separating yourself as a human being from the artwork you make mm-hmm. in some businessy kind of way. Yeah. Um, but for me with, so my business has a savings account mm-hmm. and. That got, I did that by um, working on a very big project Mm -hmm. in 2019. Worked on a very, very big project then, and I saved a lot of it. No, actually, no. Just kidding. 2020. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah, it was the YouTube Originals project I did. Oh, yeah. I It was a big project. There was actual budget and stuff for it. And Mm -hmm. so from there, I was like, I want to have, and I had already known this once I had started StumbleWell in 2018. I was like, I want to get to six months in my business savings account. So, Beautiful. and that my business savings is my salary, mm-hmm. which I also up until recently was paying myself $3,000 a month as mm-hmm. well. Um, we live in Texas, just FYI. Cost of right. living is getting absurd, but yeah. is yeah. not New York, you yeah. know, right. <laughs> is not California, is yeah. not New York. <laughs> um, but that's what I was paying myself. And then that also I had factored in like my my business expenses, which are a little bit higher because I know for you, you're more writing and like solo dolo, solo mm-hmm. dolo but StumbleWell does bring in contractors and we do have like Frame.io and like yeah. all these other things that. Oh, wow, well, I got Frame.io. Wow. Yeah, wow. we got Frame.io. <laughs> we Frame.io. Okay, client work. Client work. Yeah. So we have a lot more subscription-y things. We have like a bigger Dropbox account, yeah. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so all of that together, I knew it cost around 4K a month to mm-hmm. pay me and keep my business running. Got it. And so that's why my business savings is $20,000. And it mm-hmm. took about three, four years, yeah, since I started yeah. to get to that. Mm-hmm. And we've hit that now. But now I'm also trying to fund Hardly Working. Yes. So, and I am planning to pull money out of that Got you. to invest it into the show. Mm-hmm. Now, on the personal side of things, mm-hmm. yeah, similar to you, I have an emergency savings account that I share with my partner mm-hmm. as well. And in there, I think we have about, look, our cost of living just went up. Damn. But in there, I think we currently have about three months. Mm-hmm. I, for me, in my heart, in my spirit, in my <laughs> heart chakra, mm-hmm. I will have a lower grade of constant stress. If it's six months? If it's six months. Six months really is the goal. Yeah. I just f- will feel better in my heart chakra. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so... Money. Money. How? Here's a better question. Yeah. How much time do you think you spend... Thinking about money? Thinking about money versus thinking about your art. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, Man, I don't think about art, my, my art, nearly enough. Because when, <laughs> kind of like what I was saying earlier of like, there's always that, for me, there's always that stress of like, can I do this again? 
So it makes yes. it hard to celebrate when you accomplish something. Yes. Which is why I have the six months. Yeah. Because it's, it's like, like, that was cute for 2021, but what you going to do in 2025? Yeah, you don't know. Exactly. You have no idea. No, not a clue. I'm not a clue. So I spend a lot of time thinking about money being... <laughs> Because it's just like, how do I do it? How do I get it again? And so that kind of reinforces like my scarcity mentality. Yeah. And it makes it hard for me to spend money. Yes. Because I actually talked to a financial advisor um, and she was like, you need to spend your money. (laughs) And I was like, but I want to leave it there. Yeah. What if I just leave it there? Yeah. And so one day I could use it. Yeah. She was like, no, no, I mean, you save money to use it. Which is, like, that's facts, but, like... And I was like, or it could stay in there. (laughs) It could stay in there. And she was like, didn't you say you needed a new computer? And I was like, yeah, but... (laughs) What if I can't? What if I can't buy it again? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that I spend a lot of... I spend way more time thinking about money than the art. Yeah. And then when it comes to the art, because we're in a very expensive profession we are in a very expensive profession i end up thinking about like how am i going to make it though yeah i mean in this room alone oh yeah in this room if we if i was to put a dollar amount of one two three of what's in this room and this is including what evelyn has in here and then what i have brought to film and record this podcast yeah there's a smooth 15, 20 grand in this room. Yeah. Like easily. Like yeah. looking at hard drives, these mm-hmm. cameras. Oh, hard drives. Forgot about that. Yeah, hard drives be like yeah. 100 bucks a pop. <laughs> a freaking keyboard. It's a very basic yeah. Apple keyboard. $110. They're yeah. real proud of their stuff. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's a very expensive um, profession. And so. If you're trying to. It's an expensive, uh, like a caveat. It's an expensive profession if you're trying to have a certain level of production quality. Right. So lowly. Right. <laughs> so I also, I also think about, if I do finally think about, you know, art and creativity, I end up getting caught up thinking about how I'm going to make it versus just writing it. Yeah. And I'm like, how, what camera do I need? I ain't got that. Who got that? <laughs> Someone actually asked me, like, can you make more drone stuff? And I was like, I don't know, Halise, can I? And I was like, it, was a, it wasn't my drone. <laughs> and it ended up, I will say that video, I still get people, because it uh, I, the video ended up going viral yeah, I, for you. Yeah. Which was like, oh, okay. Uh-huh. Cool. <laughs> um, and we'll, we'll put that in the atmosphere in the show notes. Yeah. yeah. And we'll put it in the, in the show notes. Um, and because of that, I got a lot more eyes on me. And so it it kind of, it was neat because it was like the most ideal way to get exposure. Mm -hmm. I'm not a bit, I have never been a big fan of like, do this for exposure. Mm -hmm. That is not something I concur with, (laughs) (laughs) but it was, I think the fact that I came into it with just like, I want to make something cool with you. Yeah. Made it fun. And mm-hmm. and then like getting the exposure was like an added bonus. Yes. I sure. would have been done it anyway. For sure. If the video had like 300 views. Yeah. I'd still be like, this is pretty though. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like collaborating across is so cool. Like if you're, if you have a friend, artist, whatever, who buys that camera or maybe yes. I know a lot of people who have co-bought equipment together. Yes. So yeah. many people have. Mm-hmm. They'll co-buy a camera together and then yeah. be like, I'm going to use it Monday to Wednesday. You have it Thursday to Saturday. We split it on Sunday. Yeah. Or even like space. Like I, I live in an apartment and it's big, but sometimes I'd be asking my friends who have houses with like kitchens, mm-hmm. like kitchen kitchens. Kitchen kitchens. And I'm like, I need to shoot this thing with like a proper kitchen. Yeah. Can I use your space? I can buy you dinner. I can pay you, pay you. <laughs> Let me know. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing. I think there are also, if you're trying to do things indie and low budget, I think there are a lot of ways to pay people outside of money, Mm -hmm. but I think you should always try to pay people something, whether it's with your time. Mm -hmm. So like, hey, if you let me use your space, I know you're trying to design a logo. I know how to design logos. I will do that for you. Like, I do believe in bartering. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I think bartering can be a really great thing when you're starting out. Mm -hmm. Again, you just need to like 
pay people something. Yeah. And it helps when I understand that not everybody has my, not everybody will have like a group of like-minded friends. Yes. Very Um, true. And so I think it's important to use the language of the group of friends that you're with. So like if I am reaching out to a friend to use their really nice kitchen and they're not in social media at all, they don't care, then I can speak to them like, hey, I'll cook you dinner because that's the language that they care about. Yeah. If it's a friend who does has the same job as me, it's like, hey, I'll edit your next thing. Yeah. Like I'll take something off your plate if you take something off my plate. Um. So yeah, I think it's important to just use some because some people don't care about the fifty dollars that you gonna gonna pay them. Some people don't. <laughs> some people genuinely, don't, and some people do. So yeah. it's just up to you to discern like who cares about what. Yeah, and pay them accordingly. Okay, I mean, can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you ever want to quit? Like being an artist full time? What do you mean yeah. quit? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Tell me more. I be thinking about quitting uh-huh. pretty regularly. Yeah. I I be thinking about what if I had what if I had a goat farm? Come on. <laughs> Come on, goat farm. <laughs> I'd be like, ooh, if I had a goat farm yeah. and I created goat cheese. And that's all you did, make the logo. i and it'd be called Totes My Goats Cheeses. <laughs> yeah, I'm you have the name. I have a name. I love that. I really Oh no, I love that for you. Right? <laughs> oh no. I am one of the, I think about quitting wow all the time. Okay, good. That makes me feel a lot better. Okay. Cuz I yeah, I think about it so much. Because you're just always thinking. Like mm-hmm. you're always have like you and I'm trying to be better about this. I don't know if this is cuz of my my Virgoianness okay. or what. But as a freelancer, you know, it's that low grade or high grade, depending on where you are in your career <laughs> right. um, and like what your life situation is. You always have this low grade, high grade stress mm-hmm. that is it's just so much. And so a lot of times I do like it, I don't know if it's actually that I want to quit, mm-hmm. but it's that I just don't want to have this stress anymore. Yeah. And so I'm like, what who who is not pressed? <laughs> Goat farmers. <laughs> That's goat true. farmers ain't pressed, and animals are great, and yeah. I like goat cheese. And right. farmers markets sound fun. Farmers markets sound fun. Yeah. Seeing the same folks come get your goat cheese every week. Yeah, and like living off the land mm-hmm. and outside of the city, it's hilarious. My whole job is being on the internet, and so like I pick the thing. The th- yeah, I do too. That doesn't require the internet, really. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like you have a company that manages sending the goat cheese out. Yeah. You know <laughs> my my dream quit job. Yeah, hit me with it. Is I think about being a professional food prepper. Wow. And like meal what prepping, is that? meal prepping for rich people who don't have time to meal prep. Wow! Just cut the AirPods in, chop, chop, chop. Yes. Tupperwares, here you go. Yeah, and that's it. And and that sounds beautiful because it's so solitary. So not even solitary. It sounds um. I don't have to create. <laughs> anything like just jazz up some spaghetti squash and like that's it i don't have to make a statement about something you know and like i enjoy food i enjoy cooking it's still artistic culinary arts yeah you know but i think you're right because it's the internet the things that we make are so like they're gone yeah i hope someone enjoyed it it, yeah, it's all very like ones and zeros, intrinsic. Yeah, ones. It, you can't like I, you can kind of say like, oh, here's a finished video, film, yeah. whatever podcast, whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's also like, what I that? can't hand you something. Yeah, I can't hand you cheese. <laughs> you can't know, hand you cheese. I yeah. can't hand you cheese. I've thought about farming, yeah. gardening. Yeah. yeah, I've literally looked up plots. Wow. Like, like, like land plot. Damn. Okay. And I was like, buy another camera or buy some grass somewhere. <laughs> buy some grass <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> it's just, it's just. But I promise we like what we do. Yeah, this isn't a, yeah. That's it. I enjoy it. 
I do genuinely yeah. enjoy this. Mm-hmm. But I think it's also that thing of like you can do something you love and still yeah, that struggle same, with it. A lot same, of people don't, re- you know, same. forget that. If you do something you love, you'll never work a day in That's your a life. That's a damn lie. Lies. Lies. That is a lie. Lies. That is a lie. And the other thing, too, is like a lot of times, uh, this may or may not go in the podcast, but a lot of times like people will say, oh, congratulations on whatever thing you've gotten to do, mm-hmm. right? Whether it be the show mm-hmm. or getting Adobe and whatever. And I always want to like stress to artists, like it is an opportunity to do more work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is an opportunity for you to rise to the occasion and do more work. Yes. Like some of the opportunities I've gotten, mm-hmm. um, every you know, everybody's high fiving you in the comments. Yeah. And you're like and I'm happy to be here, but I also like haven't slept. Yes. Because I'm working on this full like and I yeah. it, and I have high standards for myself, mm-hmm. so I want it to be really good. Mm-hmm. So I'm stressing about it and all that kind of stuff. I'm just assuming I can have lunch. Yeah, yeah. With you. Yes. Okay, great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, after this, we're gonna go get lunch. Hey. <laughs> um, if you could give advice to artists right now who are thinking about leaving their nine to five, just because okay. we've both done it, you know. Okay. We've both done it. Mm-hmm. Similarly, differently. Mm-hmm. Tom Bien. All right. Um, what would you say? Because I feel like this is like the dream. Everyone wants to leave. Allegedly. But I'm like, allegedly. allegedly. But I'm like, do you? Do you need to? Per- me, myself, personally, I have never told anybody to quit their job. I, I haven't am, either. I am a nine to five advocate. Oh, really? Yes. I don't know if I'm an advocate, but I'm not telling you to quit either. Right, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I. The reason I work for myself is because it is the best option for me. Yes. Right now where I am in my life. In your career, yeah. It it wasn't in the beginning. That's why I didn't do it. Yeah. Um, so my advice. My advice is do you. <laughs> like, um, do you actually need to quit your nine to five? Oh, I thought you meant do you. What? Like, oh, do, do you. Like, do you. Do you, period. No, I. my advice is do you, <laughs> question mark. <laughs> because there is, it's a facade of stability because really working on a nine to five is really just you have one client. You have one client. You have one client. Whereas a freelancer, you have many clients, which is a good and a bad thing because if a client leaves, you're probably, you can. You're not fired. Yeah, you can balance it out make it work more or less hopefully god willing Mm -hmm. um but if you're nine to five you just have one client Mm -hmm. so one person to make happy yeah one person to make happy so i would say do you need to leave your full-time job Mm -hmm. um i'm not advocating for it or against it i think i'm glad that i had my nine to five as long as i did me too because i learned how to be a really really good sufficient like efficient producer aside Mm -hmm. from not hitting record on these (laughs) last few times (laughs) that's me dragging myself but like I learned how to be a really really good producer my Mm -hmm. job one of the main reasons I wanted to leave eventually was that I felt like I wasn't learning anything anymore same yeah so I would say if you're nine to five if you try to figure out how you can justify Mm -hmm. your nine to five and if you really can't justify it anymore yeah then Start to plan. Plan your exit strategy. Plan. Don't just bounce. Plan. If 2020 taught you anything, life is fleeting. <laughs> yeah. Um, have an exit strategy. And take the time to figure out your cost of living. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I would. my advice would be don't keep it all in your head. Mm. I, think, I think when people make these types of videos like how to quit your job it's like you just sit and think about it. it's like no it's pa- pen and paper yeah it's like pen and paper it's a calculator yeah it's a spreadsheet it is writing things down to see how it feels when you say it out loud yeah it's it's for me it's also like a little bit of like writing little scripts like mm. for example i know my parents will ask me what am i doing 
So I sat down and thought about it so that I could answer them with something I had thought about ahead of time. Dang. In a way that would like, so I wouldn't be like, um, why don't you believe in me? <laughs> it's like, we don't have time for that. Wow. Just I should like, have done that with my partner. <laughs> just like explain, <laughs> right? Like, okay, if someone asks, what, what do you think you're doing? I'll be like, well, I think that I'm taking six months to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. And so you can kind of like take the emotion out of a very emotional time. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's my biggest advice. Get get out of your head and get onto paper. So there you have it, Evelyn herself talking about her exit strategy and how she put herself on the path that she wanted and how it took some time um, and the certain sacrifices she made, compromises as well that she made to make it happen for her. In the description box or show notes below, I've also included a few other videos I've done in the past showing how my own exit strategy played out here on the internet as well. For those of y'all who don't know, I started StumbleWell in 2018 and I did that because I got a few opportunities. Some of them Evelyn had recommended me for. So hopefully that can be some continued learning for you to check out if you're on this journey of trying to leave your full-time job and pursue a creative career full-time. Again, I'm Halis. This is the Trying to Be Somebody video podcast where we interview mostly BIPOC artists about their creative careers in the hopes of giving you some tangible takeaways on your own creative journey. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. I'm just trying to be somebody. So make a